Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning Yeah, yeah, yeah He loves me, yeah, yeah, yeah Jesus loves me, yeah, yeah, yeah Alright, good morning, good morning, good morning Welcome back, or maybe welcome for the first time to Bible Read Along uh, If you've never been here before We just love the Bible, we love Jesus uh, my name's Daniel, and I am started Bible Read Along. I'm your host here today. I'm here with my wife, Ashley, and our kitty, Rosie, and our, Rosie's not in here my mother-in-law's dog is around here somewhere. Um, but we just, we love the Bible. We would love to get to know you, so say hi in the chats. Let us know where you are from, where you're watching from. We're live on Facebook. We're live on TikTok. And all our links for all our videos can be checked out at BibleReadAlong.com. So we've been going chapter by chapter currently through the book of Mark. And I am loving it. I am ba 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 copyright. Okay, but I am loving... The book of Mark, just going through, it's kind of the highlight reel. It's the it's the trailer. It's quick. It's action packed. It's it's made to draw the Greek Roman audience in and go. You want to know more about Jesus and these gospels? So it is very cool. Um, plus twenty nine in Chicago. Oh my goodness. Negative forty seven point five Fahrenheit for reference, by the way. Yeah. So when you when you get so cold celsius and fahrenheit so zero celsius is actually 32 degrees fahrenheit um and then you start getting colder and colder and at one point they finally go screw it there it's too cold for either and they both kind of become the same that's how cold it is and so that's how cold it is it is minus 48 where we live minus 44 where we live in celsius and basically in Fahrenheit, they're basically the same temperature now because it just reaches that that level of cold. But where are you watching from? We got people all over the world. I'm in a singing mood this morning. All over the world. That's almost a balmy zero for you. Your yeah, spirit is moving. Shorts. Yeah, I'm not wearing shorts today. I got to drive to Calgary. Uh, that's about hour and a half, two hours away. And so... Um, that's where I, I got to go. I'm going to warm up the vehicle, <laughs> very warm, and uh, drive to Calgary to go see a surgeon today about some the next steps for my hand. So that's what we're doing. Let's see who we got on Facebook here this morning. It's kind of messy looking. Pardon? I'll need to get gas. Yeah. Morning. So Janet's minus 38 with the wind in Saskatchewan. Aggie's here. And Ava. Hello, Ava, my, my young friend. Welcome, Jill, out in the Duke area. Headley in Australia, where it is 38 degrees, which is above zero. That's Fahrenheit still, I believe. Or do you guys do Celsius in Australia? I think, Celsius, don't they? I think you're Celsius in, Celsius in Australia. Let me know, Headley, if you are uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, watching from India, love that. Livingston, Montana, that's probably cool there too. I'm talking Celsius. Oh, 38 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's summer weather. Oh, yeah. That is that's like, that is our hottest days in the summer is 38. We don't have killer spiders though. So. Yeah, but we also don't have spiders as big as your face. So there is that about living in Canada. Um, Good morning, Phoenix, Arizona. We got people joining us all over the world here. We got people joining us on TikTok. Again, if you're here, help us out and help others hear the gospel. And the easiest way you can do that is on Facebook, TikTok. Hit the likes, hit the tap the screen at the bottom on, on Facebook. Hit the heart, hit the thumbs up as many times as you want throughout the, throughout the whole morning. You can just keep hitting it if you want. And comment 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 and if you're going boy i wish i could share jesus with more people you can share this out comment that helps this reach even more people with the good news of the gospel um we got mima welcome we got christopher here on tiktok my wife's in the chat there jacob from f cubed podcast awesome thank you for coming over uh that's that's who we got and that's who we are so let's pray and dive into God's word today. 
little bit different structure, but I would encourage you today, grab a Bible. Grab a Bible if you can. If you were looking for yesterday's um, live stream, by the way, I did. We went live, but then I didn't post it to YouTube and things. I didn't do the reading challenge yesterday. I apologize. Um, but let me know. We're going to post it again today. So today we'll have the challenge for Mark chapter 3 again. And uh, jump in. Read a, read along with us. So today, welcome Sharon. Um, today's a little different because what we're trying to do with Mark is something we've never done on Bible Read Along before. We read it, we study it, and then we watch a short clip from that chapter. And the, the short clip is from, it's called The Gospel of Mark, full movie. You can find it on Jesus.net. Jesus.net is the YouTube channel. I'm assuming that's their website as well. The Gospel of Mark, full movie, Jesus.net. And so we're watching it chapter by chapter after we explain it. So today we will be watching chapter three. But I want to encourage you, grab your Bible and read along. Hmm? No, we're on three today. Because I've already, yeah, we're on three. Um, but uh, read along. There's something I learned best. I am an audio visual learner now what that means if you're learning is styles learning styles some people are hands-on they need to touch some people need to see some people need to do it the best way for me to learn scripture and to actually memorize scripture is audio visual and so what does that mean it means i hear it and i see it and when you hear it and read it at the same time they teach people to study this way in universities as well because when you hear it and see it often it sticks in your memory more than if you were just to do one or the other. When you do both, it heightens your retention of it. So I would encourage you, read along. It's going to be Mark chapter 3, but let's pray. Let's pray. It's a small one. It wasn't when I preached it yesterday, but today it'll oh, be so only... The, today's just the video. So you're doing the reading first and then the video. Yes. That's why I thought we were on chapter 3. Yeah. So, Lord, thank you so much, so much. Thank you so much. Wherever you are, just take a moment in your heart, your mind. What are you thankful for? God, thank you. We, put, we come with praise and thanksgiving today. We come ready to learn your word. We come expecting to meet with you and to have you meet with us and speak through your word. Lord, build this community, build us as individuals, change us, transform us to be Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled believers that are not ashamed to share the gospel with as many as we can. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. Welcome, Sarah, Claire. All right, let's get ready. So, so this is um, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3. And let me see if I can do this right, because I want it to look good on TikTok as well. Not just Facebook. Your phone's dying. Okay, turn this on. There we go. Okay, so now on Facebook and later on YouTube things, you should see me in the corner and the video. And let's see if we can make this bigger on TikTok. There we go. I think we're looking good everywhere. Here we go. Let's dive in. I want to encourage you, read along. Grab the Bible. This is in the NIV version. Read along. What? I know. I'm sorry. I'm touching my nose today. I'm stuffed up. Um, okay, here we go. And I'm probably going to talk a little bit over it. And the only reason I'm doing that is so that we don't get any type of, of strikes on any of the channels. So if I cut in or pause it, that's why I'm hoping to reduce that, that, uh, <laughs> if we have any issues, here we go. If you're ready, are you ready for God's word? Ready. Type in the word, type in the chat right now, either on TikTok or Facebook type ready for God's word, ready. Type it in. Yes, let's go, Philip says. 
from Kenya. Philip from Kenya. Welcome. Ron, good morning, my brother Ron. All right, I see some readies. We're ready. TikTok's ready. Facebook's ready. Here we go. Turn the volume up. Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil? To save life or to kill? Again, this is the they NIV version, if you're reading along, NIV. He looked around at them in anger and, deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Pause here for just a second. Um, again, we're just reading Mark 3, NIV version. I encourage you to read along. We've already talked about this more in depth yesterday. And yesterday we really went into um, the spirit of the religious spirit. Now, religion is not a bad word, but religious spirit is a bad thing. And we went in, we broke down some of what happens there. Um, go back and watch it if you haven't already. It will be available on all platforms today. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard about all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him, for he had healed many so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God! And he gave them strict orders not to tell others about him. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter. We're at verse James, 16 and 17 Zebedee, right and his now. brother John. To them he gave the name Boanerges, which means sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. We're in Mark chapter 3. We're going to be reading verse 20 now. Mark 3, verse 20. Again, all of this we explained yesterday. If you missed it, go back and watch yesterday's video. Then Jesus entered the house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. I'm going to pause for just a second here and I'll maybe back it up here too. But that's an interesting verse. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday. But when his family heard about this, verse 21, they went to take charge of him. 
for they said he's out of his mind. So yesterday we talked about how they said he's out of his mind. Jesus is out of his mind. But to take charge of him is an interesting phrase because this is actually what we would consider today, um, you know, like when somebody is not in their right mind and you actually have to step in legally to, to actually be the um the one to sign documents to handle things like you do for me <laughs> like i do for my wife she said <laughs> um but this is this is actually like that phrase i would guess if we looked into it a little further is actually probably a legal term that they are actually coming to to be in charge because his his own family thinks that he is out of his mind now i'm not including mary in that um, but I am including, even though she came with the other children, which we'll see here in just a second. Um, this is Jesus's brothers, maybe even sisters. Yes, he had siblings. Um, Mary and Joseph had several other kids after Jesus was born. And so that just caught me today when we see this phrase, you know, they came to take charge of him. So let's keep going here. Let me see if I can rewind this. Okay, we'll go back to this demon-possessed man. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub. By the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Okay, I'm going to pause there again for a second. We spent a lot of time yesterday. This is verses about spiritual warfare. Um, you know, you can't, uh, you can't go into a strong man's house unless you bind the strong man. Who can bind sickness, disease, unforgiveness? Um, we talked about all this yesterday. It has to be God alone. So in a subtle way, Jesus is again here saying, I am God because I'm doing these things. Um, we also spent a little bit of time yesterday talking about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and what does that mean? Because blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is not just saying, he has a demon or the Holy Spirit's not the Spirit of God or that is not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. In my opinion, you will need to go look this up for yourself and find out more. But I base my understanding on these scriptures, also on Hebrews 6, where we read through yesterday a pretty big list of what you have to experience. And then if you turn away from Jesus still, after you've experienced, and we're talking like they talk about the foundations of forgiveness, baptism, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, tasting of the heavenly gift, things to come. You've partaken in the spirit of God. And if you still turn your back, there is no forgiveness for you. I believe there is only, that is the only thing that is unforgivable, which is called blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is... Um, a, a, it's not an accident. It's not one time thing that you say it is in, it is knowing who Jesus is. And I would even say in some degree of fullness and still going, I willingly choose to ignore the truth. I'm not going to believe this. I'm not going to, this is, 
And how do you know? So there's some questions coming. I see already going, well, how do you know if you've committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Here's a, here's a great test. If you're worried about it, you have it <laughs> because if you have truly committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, um, which is as Claire just said in the chat, denial of God, if you have truly committed this, you will, you will willingly intentionally fight against God. It actually pairs, I'm getting too deep, but it pairs with a spirit of the antichrist the antichrist spirit that is anti-god anti-jesus anti the things of god and so if you're worried you've done it that actually shows conviction lord convict me of wrong i'm worried i've said this it shows you can still repent if you could not repent you wouldn't even be convicted of it so that's why i'm saying that this chapter is almost done let's finish it up here Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Yeah, my Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. There. Yeah, and we're going to talk about it. Ashley just said uh, that whole thing could be taken so out of context. Let's me fix the camera here on. Okay. Do you want this? Okay. Um, yeah. So there is Mark chapter three. Again, this is something new that we're trying. We have not watched videos of the chapters we're reading before. Um, what do you think? Do you like it? Are you learning? Does it add to it? My wife thinks Peter's cute. So Simon. Simon. Si well, it might have been Simon the I don't remember. Simon the the zealot. Um so my wife thinks Simon is cute. But oh, yeah, like the bad boy. Are you are you learning? Are you, she just said it's probably Simon the zealot cuz she likes the bad boys. I don't know how she ended up with me then. Um but uh what do you guys think? What do you think of this? What did you learn? What stood out to you? Obviously, I'm highlighting a few things as we go along. This is a very interesting last phrase. And again, all of this we talked about more in depth yesterday in our actual study of Mark chapter 3. If you missed that, it will be available. It's available right now on Facebook. Um, but go check it out. I see friends jumping in. Welcome, JD. Uh, welcome, brother. Reverend Rob, Tony. So good to see you guys. Jeremiah, thank you. Teresa, glad you guys are all here. Um, Wanda, welcome. Mariposa. Mar Mariposa. Mariposa. Sorry if I said that funny. Matthew. Allison says, I like it. What do you guys think? What stood out to you? Let's talk for just a minute as well here about these last verses that Jesus talked about here. His mother comes. His brothers come and say we're here to take charge of jesus because he's out of his mind they're hearing stories they're hearing you know he's healing on the sabbath he's doing things there's miracles there's signs they're hearing things they're hearing also they're probably not only hearing the good things they are hearing the rumors from the religious leaders and others that are trying to kill jesus that are trying to end him um and so, you know, there's, there's all of these things that they're hearing and they're going to take charge of Jesus, maybe because they think he's crazy, maybe because they're worried about him, maybe a bit of both. We don't fully know here, but they, they, it does say that, you know, he was out of his, that they were saying he's out of his mind. But then Jesus says this, the mother, Mary, brothers, sisters, maybe even come and go, you know, Hey, Jesus, somebody, your, your family's outside. They want you. And Jesus says something very shocking here, actually, especially in this culture 
of, of the Jewish culture where families often lived together, stayed together. You know, family was a very important thing. And he says, there's something, not that family's not important, but he said, there is something more important than even blood relationships and then family. There is something more important. There is something of greater value. There is something of a higher importance. Now, does that mean do not have connection and relationship with your family? No, but it means put the right things first. And he looks around and he says, who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who are my sisters? Those who do God's will. Those who do God's will. These are, in my own life, I'll just be very honest here. In my own life, this has caused issues. This has caused troubles. Because there were times when my own family would go, how dare you, you're, you're not, how come you're not here? You're always at the church. You're always reading your Bible. You're always, um, you know, so all of these things. And I said, yes, because that's the priority. Every other relationship flows out of this relationship, me and God, and then I need godly community. And then I also need interaction with family, others in a godly way. Um, so this is, this to me is just very interesting. What do you think? This is a hard one for many to swallow, especially if you have a tight family or you want a tight family. Um, this can be a tough thing, but to me, this is just, this is just, it, it just shows the importance. Not that family is not important. He is not saying, turn your back on your family and leave and go be in the church. That sounds kind of cultish. I'm going to be just very honest. Um, and if your church is telling you, you should give up your entire family and everything and go, I would be cautious. That doesn't mean, you know, what's the context, but I would be cautious um, of what they are saying, because it should be, it should be a pouring into, I have multiple cups here and I'm not going to do this because I would make a mess, but it should be, if I had a church cup, here's my celebrate recovery church community. And I have my family community, my water. Now it shouldn't be one or the other. It should actually be, if I have a healthy relationship with God, and with his community, that's going to pour into my family cup. And if I'm, if I'm well and with my family and boundaries are good, that's going to pour into my church community cup. And, and it should be pouring into both. And so, yes, Claire, we see, I'm seeing a lot of comments, especially on TikTok about this, um, you know, but, but I was with, I was at a celebrate recovery event last night and then we're going to talk about comments, but I was at a celebrate recovery event last night talking to someone. Um, and we were, we ended up talking about treatment centers and different things. And, and one of the things we said, you know, it's so hard, your environment, who you're around. Wow. We get into a treatment center. We maybe have, have struggled with addiction and we're finally breaking that. Yay. You surround yourself with the right people. Same with even not addiction. Let's use another people go to Bible college. People go to church. People go and they act so different and it brings life and they're around a community that begins to change them. Then the problem is when they get released, they get out, they're out of jail, out of a treatment center, out of, out of a church environment, out of the camp life, out of Bible college, they go back to the same environment that was corrupting and corroding their values, their thoughts as they were living in before their behaviors. Who we have around us is so important. And thank God when family, when family, blood family serves Jesus, there's no greater joy because now that blood family becomes the church family that you are doing life with. I am so grateful that my wife and I serve Jesus together. It is a miracle. It's amazing. There's no other way that I would want to do ministry than serving with her. 
and and we serve each other but it helps our relationship it also helps us grow spiritually and that's all that jesus was saying he's not saying here you know and jesus says this a few times there's a few you know unless you unless you hate your mother and your brother and follow me it this was not saying go hate people this was saying in comparison this is often how they talked this was often the style of writing in comparison your how much you love your family in comparison to how much you love me is going to seem like you don't even like your family because your love for me is going to so outweigh that we see this with paul he talks about our righteousness your own righteousness as righteous as you are compared to the righteousness of god on a scale is it will seem like dirty dung rags because your own righteousness compared to God's righteousness is nothing. Your own level of love compared to God's level of love is nothing. Your own level of family compared to God's level of family is nothing. Now, that doesn't mean those things are nothing. It means in comparison. We need the context here. In comparison, it, it would seem as if you love one and hate the other. Because that's how it would seem. But that's not what he's saying. So let's look at some comments here on Facebook. Um, that was, um, again, the Ma the Gospel of Mark full movie. It's called the Gospel of Mark full movie on Jesus.net YouTube channel. And I'm sure that that is their website as well. So here's some Facebook comments. And then we're going to hang out on TikTok a little longer. Answer all your comments, questions. Some great comments coming in there. Um, morning. I like it. Allison says for me, Janet says watching these, the visual helps me to reinforce what we read. Amen. That's the whole point. That's what we're trying to do. Same here. I was such a wreck and needed the influence of the body of Christ. Yes, because who we hang around, um, it changes us. This is why sometimes wait, if you give your life to Jesus, what you what we would call saved or being born again if you give your life to jesus one of the evidences of that should be a love for the brothers and sisters in christ the love for the community of god and and we need that because who we hang around with does change who we are um you know leadership influencers they tell that they talk about this all the time show me your top five friends and i'll show you your future right show me your five people you hang out with most i'll show you what your future looks like um this is why it's important and this is why sometimes when we're making changes i want to follow jesus i don't want to be who i used to be i want to be free from hurts habits hangups i want to whatever it is when we begin to move forward, sometimes we drastically need boundaries. We need to change our environment. We need to be able to say no to some people, yes to some people, because who we hang out with is going to determine our future. Janet also says, um, for my, all my sisters are believing and so is my brother. Amen. It took a long time for my brother to come around. He and his wife would walk away when we, when we would start talking about Jesus. But prayer and something that was said clicked with him and his wife praise god amen birds of a feather flock together lisa says yes that is so true as well and i see a bunch of comments here on tiktok and then we're gonna head over to tiktok and just hang out for a little while longer i'm scrolling up here sorry there's a lot of comments um Sorry, I'm just making sure I, let's just jump in somewhere here. Daniel, they knew him not came to mind. Yes, I fully agree, Tony. Um, yeah, prayers for my mom, dad, and brother. Amen. We just pray. And we see here, like, if you have unsafe family, keep praying. Uh, Sharon says she struggles with this concept with family versus church community. Um, Claire says, honor your parents. Now honor your parents does not mean you just blindly obey and do what they say. 
I might step on some toes here. Honor honor is a heart position that says I honor them. I'm grateful. I'm going to bless them. It doesn't mean you always agree with what they are saying. And hopefully when you disagree, you can disagree with, with righteousness, doing this in a right way. Um, so I just, I just want to throw that in there. I know that's not what you're saying, Claire, but sometimes it can come across. Um, you know, we say that, well, I'll just honor your parents. That's what, that's the Lord's command. It is. You're absolutely right. But we have to define what honor is. And honor does not mean not having boundaries if they're toxic or harmful. Honor does not mean just obeying blindly whatever they say. Honor does not mean um, you, that you ignore the church community because they don't like it. That's that's We honor God above all. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Um... And there are other verses here. Your environment is important, Teresa says. Thankful for church family, Claire says. What if what if your family is the toxic ones, specifically parents? Very simple. Sharon, I believe in boundaries. Boundaries are needed. And it's not wrong. I've actually, we highlight when Jesus has boundaries in here quite often. I would even say in this chapter, Mark chapter 3, Jesus had some boundaries. Um, how do we know that? He asked, the, he asked the disciples to get a boat ready because he didn't want everyone crowding him, touching him around him at that time. That's a boundary. It's a simple one, but that's a boundary. Have a boat ready so I can teach in the boat so I'm not crowded. This is a boundary. If I need to teach the gospel, this is what we need to prepare for me to teach the kingdom properly. Um, he had a boundary with his parents and his, 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 with Mary and his brothers and sisters. They came to the door. He didn't just run off. He didn't, he, he said, you know, I'm here. I'm going to finish. We're talking. Now, is, did Jesus love his parents? Yes, he loved Mary, loved Joseph. He loved his brothers. You know, one later became a disciple, wrote the book of James. Like this isn't, this isn't that he didn't love his parents, but he had boundaries there. So I see for me, I even see in the life of Jesus, boundaries being shown all the time. So if people are toxic, if they are corrupting you, if it is a bad environment for you, um, there may need to be some boundaries. Now, Henry Cloud does have some great books, uh, Gina just said, and movies on boundaries. You can find them on YouTube. Boundaries.me is his website for that as well. There's a six-minute video that talks about how to have boundaries. Um, and in there, he talks about boundaries are not a wall. So even setting healthy boundaries, healthy boundaries have a gate, a gate that says, hey, if these boundaries are honored, I open up and we come in, we connect. We Now, if they're unhealthy, the gate begins to shut, right? And so boundaries does not mean, again, this is that I'm not going to just ignore, cut them off, we're done, division. That's not healthy boundaries. You're, you're doing boundaries wrong. You might be protecting yourself, but you are not healthily doing boundaries. Um, Teresa, I'm thankful for my church family. Yeah, and again, if you can't, if they're so toxic, you can't even contact them, you may have to make that decision. I had to for a long time. With my parents, we actually had a separation um, for years. I still have siblings I don't talk to, and I try. I open the door and say, hey, by the way, here I know I have boundaries, but there is a gate here. Are you ready to come in the gate? No, I'm not. Okay, all right, fine then. Then the boundary stays in place. Um they're malleable. Boundaries are malleable, bendable, flexy. Um, I think that's it. And yes, Claire hit on a big thing here. Don't let unforgiveness and bitterness take root. If you are setting up boundaries out of hate, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, you're probably setting up wrong boundaries. Boundaries are not... You know, and this gets into forgiveness. This gets into forgiveness doesn't suddenly mean that everything's good. Forgiveness means that you are no longer held captive by those emotions and feelings. It doesn't change the past. It doesn't change the behavior. It doesn't justify wrong behavior, but it means you are no longer bound and prisoner by those feelings. So there, there's a whole lot. And really all of these things, as you start to learn these things and, and bring them together, um, 
it just, this is called maturity. This is maturing as a Christian. And are you going to get it right all the time? No. Do I get it right all the time? No, definitely not. But you learn and you grow and you come back and you go, is this Bible, are the decisions, the behaviors, the thoughts that I'm having, are they Bible based? Second, are they Christ centered? Does this reflect Jesus? Does it point people to Jesus? Is it pointing me closer to Jesus? And third, is it spirit filled? The fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Um, am I showing these fruit? If not, I'm probably not filled with the spirit the way I should be. Is there room for, and there's more to being filled with the spirit in my opinion, but that's the basis, right? And so now you can look at it and go, okay, I'm setting boundaries, but I am, are, is my thoughts, behaviors, actions, Bible-based? Or is it hurt-based, anger-based? Does it point people to Jesus, point me to Jesus? Does it reflect who Jesus is? And does it show fruit in my life of a life changed by Jesus Christ and now filled with his spirit? That's my thoughts. Thank you, guys. That'll be it for today. D'Anthony, uh, God set boundaries in the garden. Amen. Boundary means we're okay. What's okay and what's not okay? Absolutely. Again, if you want more info on boundaries, I suggest Henry Cloud, um, boundaries.net. He's got podcasts, videos, all sorts of stuff for free that you can go and begin to learn. Um, and then he's got books, the boundaries book. There's a boundaries workbook. There's boundaries in marriage boundaries. And he's got a bunch of different books on it. Go check them out. That's it. We're going to be done on Facebook. So bye guys. We'll do our intro here one more time. And then we're going to hang out still on TikTok for just a little while. Bible, Bible read, read along. along. Committed, Committed to, to developing, developing Christ centered, Christ -centered Bible based, spirit filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com